getting the facts right and alerting you to weather danger. This is KTEX's News at 10. We start tonight with breaking news out of Brown County where a 1200 acre wildfire that threatened an explosives plant is burning tonight. Let's go live to KTEX's reporter Joshua Peguero in Zephyr and Joshua earlier you could see those flames raging there in the distance. Well, we're still right in the middle of the fire. As you can see right behind me, the fire continues to rage on. You can see the smoke. Uh, we're, we're surrounded by trees, and as, literally as we were coming in, we saw one tree on fire. Our photographer right here, Nick Bradshaw, is getting, he's getting video of a house that burned down. As you can see, there's nothing left of this house. There's just flames and rubble. Um, it's twisted metal. It's still hot. We can feel it. We're just sweating just being close to this house and to the rubble right here. Uh, today we spoke with uh, the uh, Texas A&M Forest Service PIO Clay Bells who told us uh, that the fire did not make it to the plant. But what we have deemed is that the fire blew through the plant but it did not affect any of the buildings that might have housed or manufactured the explosives. It only hit a few sort of uh, extra buildings and at first they came in with a drone to inspect the fire as the fire went through the plant. And then they came in with actual inspectors and they've officially deemed that plant as safe. Again, as you can see right now, this is the house that's completely burned down. It's just a burnt down house. Early, we were out here earlier today and we spoke to some residents who just decided to stay behind. The Texas Department of Public Safety told us the entire town of Zephyr was ordered to evacuate because of the fire. The fire began at 2 in the afternoon Monday along County Road 259, just southeast of Zephyr. Texas A&M Forest Service reports the fire is 500 acres and not fully contained. Kerry Peavy brought water and Gatorade to the firefighters. They're all hot and it's, this heat's going to make them tire out a lot faster. Some people decided to stay behind. We spoke to one woman who is parked at the Zephyr High School football stadium. I feel safe where I'm at. I think some of the fumes are coming this way. And my eyes are burning and my throat's burning a little bit, but I'm not leaving. My husband's out there fighting this fire. I'm not leaving. Major roads going in and out of Zephyr have been closed. Again, this fire is very active. As you can see, this is a house that burned down uh, in Zephyr due to this fire. Again, fire crews are out here battling this blaze and it's still very, very active. It's, it's just hot, us standing right here next to this house. Live in Zephyr, Joshua Peguero, K Texas News. Joshua, thank you. Well, as many as 300 people were forced to evacuate their homes, but many of them now able to return home tonight. We go now to KTEX's anchor, Veronica Soto. She joins us live from the Salvation Army in Brownwood, where some of those evacuees went tonight. Veronica? Well, the families here at the Salvation Army, as you can see, playing cards right now, just trying to pass time. They tell me, though, that they're not taking any chances tonight. They're not leaving here until they know that fire crews have a good control of that fire tonight. And these people say that they were caught off guard earlier today on this hot summer day. They were inside, not paying attention to that plume of smoke growing outside of their windows. People here thankful to know that that plant has been deemed safe and crews are are back out battling the blaze yet evacuees are aware of people who already lost their homes today in this grass fire that we're told started with a house fire they don't want to head back home to possibly scramble again and re-evacuate all over again the ordeal pretty scary for some I mean, we could see from my driveway if you look off to the left a big huge smoke cloud and it looks like a big huge fire and heard that it was at a plant that could possibly explode and take out most of Zephyr. We've got six dogs in the house. And so I just grabbed, we just grabbed dogs and grabbed my wife and we took off. We left and that was it. And this way here and we didn't know where to go to and uh, we listened to the radio and the radio said there said, you know, go to the uh, Salvation Army. 
A lot of the 250 plus evacuees do have family in Brownwood. A lot of them staying with those family members. A lot of them already returning home. Yet these people still getting images of that fire that they say is growing and they still don't know what the situation is like back home. So they're staying put though. They tell me they are keeping those firefighters who are back on the fire lines tonight in their thoughts and prayers. Reporting live in Brownwood, Veronica Soto, K Texas News. Veronica, thank you. We're also finding out more about another fire, this one in Mills County. According to the Texas A&M Forest Service, this fire is 1,500 acres and it's 40% contained. Officials calling for evacuations there on County Roads 830 and 235 and part of County Road 250. We'll keep an eye on both of these fires overnight and let you know about any big changes. And now to the weather. We're covering two major wildfires tonight and this hot, dry weather isn't helping firefighters. K-Texas Chief Meteorologist Mark Rallick now with a first look at our forecast. Mark? Well, we are tracking a cold front that is working its way through the area. You notice milder temperatures, mainly here in the big country. At last check, though, it's still 91 in Brownwood, 97 in Brady. That milder air is taking its time filtering into our southern areas. Relative humidity values around, uh, well, 32, 34 percent there in the Brownwood area, Brady area. We've come up to 49 percent here in Abilene as the temperatures have cooled a bit. Winds are pretty steady now from the northeast. That's where I think they will stay from that direction for the rest of the night. Latest wind check, 13 miles per hour there in Brownwood, 18 in Brady, and wind gusts as high as 22 over there at Ivy Reservoir and at Coleman. Probably not going to get any stronger than that. We are looking at some showers that came through earlier this evening, but a lot of them were so light they evaporated before reaching the ground, so I think we're not going to get any help with rain. Temperatures, though, 74 tomorrow morning. We're only going up to 95 tomorrow afternoon. We're going to stay in two-digit territory for the next few days. More about that coming up. Thank you, Mark. The hot, dry weather this past week making drought conditions worse. The city of Abilene currently has restrictions on how much you can water your lawn throughout the week, and Rodney Taylor, the director of water utilities, says one of the best ways you can help save water, cutting back on how much you water. The biggest impact they can have is really only watering their lawn and, and landscape as much as absolutely necessary in this, these dry conditions. Uh, we've recommended for years that even though they can water more than uh, one time a week, that one time a week of a good soaking with an irrigation system should be adequate in most conditions. You can find out more information about water restrictions on our website. That's ktxs.com. Taylor County Commissioners looking over the county budget, trying to decide what gets cut. And this year, agencies requesting millions of dollars more than they did last year. K-Texas reporter Maria Aguilera has more on how they're crunching those numbers. Taylor County Commissioners met with departments in the area during budget hearings to learn about their needs and wants. Their current budget is $61.5 million. Now, they're looking at an $8.9 million increase for this upcoming fiscal year. The commissioners, we have the job deciding what that budget's going to look like and how, what, what we can afford and what we can't afford. I can tell you we can't afford $8.9 million. Taylor County Judge Downing Bowles says they'll have to cut a lot out. When your revenue is growing by a million dollars and your expenses are growing by $8.9 million, that, that's not going to work. Bowles says departments sometimes ask for things they don't necessarily uh, need. So the, the next step, uh, commissioners will each make a preliminary list of what they believe should be eliminated, then together determine what's out. Meanwhile, with the growth in the county, Bowles says people sometimes expect the same level of service as in the city. Typically, when you have more growth in an area, it, uh, it, it does drive up costs. Unlike the city, where taxes are higher due to the services they provide, Bowles says he wants to keep costs down within the county. Maria Aguilera, K Texas News. In August, there will be three public hearings where people can voice their opinions about that upcoming budget. Well, in Clyde and many other small towns, EMS crews often understaffed, but now there might be a high school program that can help. After years of students showing interest, Clyde High School wants to add an EMT program. They're partnering with Citizens EMS to make that happen. This program would allow students to get entry-level positions in the healthcare field after graduation. In the next few weeks, Clyde High School will send a plan to the state, hoping it gets approved. 
We really want every one of our students to leave us career ready. We want them to have a certification or have dual credit or something under their belt so that when they leave us, they're ready to go into the workforce or go on to post-secondary education. If everything goes as planned, they'll start the program in the fall. And earlier tonight, you might have seen this, the town of Brady in the national spotlight. One man's antique collection caught the attention of the show American Pickers. That's on the History Channel, I believe. K-Texas reporter Joshua Piguero checked out the collection for himself. This is my first collectible toy. Kenneth Young has spent 60 years building his collection of antique cars and toys. I'm not going to bore you. I just want to show you. He also has an old piano. Willie would be proud of me. Willie, Willie Nelson. The 83-year-old isn't as mobile as he used to be after several knee surgeries, but he took us on a tour of his shop in Brady where the hosts of American Pickers, Mike Wolf and Frank Fritz, search for treasures in January. Now don't trip just just come on through and about a dozen people spent a whole day rummaging young's collection of antiques you know half of collecting is the history and that's what they that's what they are very interested in i'm sitting in a fire truck that's dated to 1925 and it is operable unfortunately young says he can't drive it because he blew out a tire and he's waiting to replace it but this along with several other antique cars are part of his prized possessions I, my life has been focused around uh, these antique cars and antique fire trucks Young says his toy collection is estimated to be worth more than $100,000. Items he says he bought at swap meets and other antique shops. In Brady, Joshua Piguero, K Texas News. Getting national attention. He definitely has quite the collection out there. He does, and it's nice that a lot of it still works. Yeah, that's true. And I tell you what, our weather is working toward cooling down. You saw that in our northern areas today with highs only in the upper 90s. It still got up to 101 in Abilene, and that was 6 degrees above normal for this time of the year. We have been tracking some light showers on the radar. We'll look at that when you come back in just a bit. But first, police releasing surveillance video of the suspect after a Houston doctor was shot and killed riding his bike to work. More on who police are looking for later on KTEX's News at 10. Getting the facts right and alerting you to weather danger. You're watching KTEX's News at 10 with Veronica Soto, Will Jensen, Mark Rowlett, and Evan Nimick. Now, your storm alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mark Rowlett. Good evening, everyone. Lots of false echoes around the radar sites in our area, but we are tracking some very light little showers that have been moving through Brady down here toward Mason. This is actually, I think, the wind shift line that is technically the cold front moving down toward Interstate 10. Those little showers near Brady are so light, they're probably evaporating before reaching the ground. So we're likely to stay dry for the rest of the night. This area of rain off to our northwest, probably not going to make it in here tonight. As we get to Thursday, I think we have a chance of seeing some showers. But all's quiet for tomorrow. We're back to putting our alert tracker in the low risk range because we've lost the excessive heat warnings and advisories. They all timed out this evening. And tomorrow we should be back to normal summertime temperatures. That doesn't mean it's going to be cool, but at least we're out of that excessive heat we've been fighting the past several days tomorrow. Tonight for Abilene, partly cloudy and warm. We'll get down to about 74, which is where we've been the past several nights. It's the afternoon temperature you'll really appreciate. Here's our forecast. Lots of clouds and our weather forecast model is going to try to put some showers back into our area tonight. I'm afraid that's probably not going to happen. I wish it would, but I don't think it's going to happen. These showers up to our northwest forecast to fade before they can really help us out, but some clouds come back in. Kind of a cloudy afternoon. That also will help to keep temperatures down in the 90s for tomorrow. Looking at generally fair skies Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, back to full sunshine. We may get back into the upper 90s on Wednesday. Then here comes another weather system, actually a weak cold front. Could send a few little showers into our northern areas by sunrise on Thursday and a chance of showers mainly for our northern and western areas 
for Thursday afternoon will keep a slight chance of showers for Friday as well. Temperatures slowly coming down here from north to south, but look at that, still 92 in Austin, 93 in Midland, but 83 isn't too bad here in Abilene. Our southern areas, though, still fighting the late evening heat. 97 at last check in Brady, 93 in Brownwood, 95 in San Angelo, but it's 83 in Aspermont, also 83 in Knox City, and 83 is the current temperature in Abilene. Winds are from the north northeast at 9. We've lost those gusts in Abilene. Relative humidity coming up at 49%, actually giving us a heat index of 84. We're going to cool down to about 74 tomorrow morning, which is really not all that cool and not really out of line for this time of the year. The big change, highs tomorrow only 95 in Abilene, so that's back to normal with a northeast wind around 10 miles per hour. Brownwood, we're going to keep you dry with temperatures in the mid to upper 90s through Thursday. And Sweetwater Snyder looking at partly cloudy skies tomorrow. Sunny Wednesday, a slight chance of a straight thunder shower on Thursday. Highs generally in the mid 90s. And there are those rain chances for Thursday. We're going to keep them going into Friday. Likely dry for the weekend and maybe our best chance of showers shaping up for late Sunday night into Monday. And we could sure use that rain, Will. We sure could, those rain chances, and I want to say cooler temperatures, still hot, but... That's right, but better than that crazy uh, heat. You're right. Thank you, Mark. And up next, President Trump considering removing security clearances for some top former officials who've criticized the president, what lawmakers are saying about it after this. Welcome back. The White House says President Trump is considering removing security clearances for some former top officials, many who've criticized the president. As Christine Frizzell tells us, now lawmakers are weighing in. President Trump on the offensive after a new round of criticism, insisting in a tweet he gave up nothing in his private meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. But staunch allies on Capitol Hill recently given classified briefings on Russia, calling Mr. Trump out. The evidence is overwhelming. It can be proven beyond any evidentiary burden that Russia is not our friend and they tried to attack us in 2016. House Oversight Committee Chairman Trey Gowdy taking his warnings one step further, now calling for action from the president's aides. The president either needs to rely on the people that he has chosen to advise him or those advisors need to reevaluate whether or not they can serve in this administration, but the disconnect cannot continue. That disconnect also playing out over the invitation to President Putin to visit the White House, with some saying those visits should be reserved for allies, with new calls for President Trump to demand more from Russia. Stop supporting Iran against our ally Israel. Uh, stop supporting Bashar al-Assad, the president of Syria, who has led to the rise of ISIS. And despite what seems to be a groundswell of criticism for President Trump, the latest NBC News Wall Street Journal poll is out and the president's approval rating has actually increased to 45 percent, one of the highest approval ratings for any recent president at this time in their presidency. On Capitol Hill, I'm Christine Frizzau. Houston police still looking for the cyclist who shot a doctor who was biking to work. They released surveillance video of the suspect today. Cardiologist Mark Houseconnect died after being shot. He was riding the yellow bike indicated by that arrow. The red arrow points out the suspect on a blue bike. Houston police describe the suspect as a white or Hispanic man in his 30s. They do not know if Houseconnect was targeted or if the shooting was random. Houseconnect, a former doctor to former president George H.W. Bush. And the duck boat that capsized during a storm in Missouri last week has been raised from the bottom of Table Rock Lake. Several divers, a large barge crane, and water pumps were used in this process. The boat capsized Thursday after a severe thunderstorm. It sank 80 feet down, 31 people on board at the time, 17 people died. The boat will be taken to a secure facility where Highway Patrol will transfer custody of it to the NTSB. And coming up on K-Texas News at 10, we have sports and the ACU men's basketball team hoping their new athletic director will be able to help them on the court. Evan Nimick shows us how. That's next. Now sports.
Sports with Evan Nimming. Good evening, everyone. In just two weeks, most of the high school football teams across the state will begin practicing, including many of our big country schools. We continue our look ahead to the season as we dive into Class 3A with District 3 in Division 1, where five area schools are grouped in with Powerhouse Wall. Breckenridge moves back in with big country teams and returns 10 offensive starters, including quarterback Owen Woodard. Two teams in this district are breaking in new coaches. Jim Ned's Matt Fanning was promoted from offensive coordinator last month and has 15 starters back from last year's area finalists, including Cooper Castro, Casey Hall, and Ty Doty. Scott Campbell is the new man in Clyde, and the Bulldogs look stacked with the bruising Peyton Burton and Donovan Gomez back, plus catching machine Peyton Laughlin on the outside. Eastland's always tough. Head coach James Morton's son, Barron, will be the quarterback. He threw 10 TDs last year as a freshman. And expect early to be much improved. The Longhorns snapped a 12-game losing streak last year, going 3-7. And, and QB Ryan Trompler threw for more than 2,000 yards last year and scored 23 touchdowns. Here's how Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine sees this district shaking out. Wall in first, no surprise there. Breckenridge in second with Jim Ned coming in third and Eastland in fourth. DCTF believes Clyde and Early will miss the playoffs. Also in two weeks, ACU's new athletic director, Alan Ward, begins his job in Abilene, and there's one program that is especially happy he's coming to Texas. That is the men's basketball team. Ward is coming to ACU from Murray State, where the men's basketball team won six regular season conference titles during his time there and played in the NCAA tournament four times, including this past year when the Racers were a 12 seed. Ward spent 13 years as the AD at Murray State, and the Wildcat men's basketball team hopes he can elevate their play as well. I'm extremely excited to get behind the scenes with him and talk about our needs and what he can do to help us. And there's no, there's no doubt he knows it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, he's done it. It's not just on his resume. Uh, he's been very successful uh, at building basketball programs and not just a one program and, and die off. They, they've consistently been good. So I'm extremely excited to, to learn from him. I would think our students would be excited. I know our players will. You know, I mean, all they have to do is read a little bit about it and his experience in men's basketball. And he does have a lot of success in men's basketball from Murray State. And hopefully it does carry over to ACU. Thank you, Evan. Up next, the fish came to the fishermen here. Thousands of them jumping in their boat. We'll tell you what might be going on here after this. K-Texas, getting the facts right. Check this out. Tens of thousands of sardines surprised a group of fishermen by leaping out of the water. And as you can see, they went right into the fishing boat there. This in a northern Taiwan port city. A fisherman recorded this as he and his crew were cleaning their boat over the weekend. One fisherman said, though, he saw a group of barracudas in the area. They might have been hunting these sardines, sending them to, uh, into this frenzy there. A lot of fish there. Yeah, I think they're trying to get away from a predator. Right. The only problem is a, a lot of them ended yeah, up on the boat. it's sort of the frying so. pan or the fire, isn't right. it? What's yeah, the, they're, they're kind of in a bad <laughs> spot there. We're looking at milder temperatures that are filtering in gradually. We notice them here in the big country, but it's still in the low 90s in our southern areas. Those winds there from the northeast going to stay that way tonight and tomorrow around Brownwood, uh, 10 miles per hour, the last check there, but you've got some gusts as high as 23, Coleman, 24 there in Brady, and uh, no gust to report to you here in Abilene. Those winds around 10 miles per hour. Temperature 74 tomorrow morning. Nice change, only 95 for the high tomorrow afternoon. All right, and stay with KTXS.com for updates on those wildfires we were telling you about at the beginning of this newscast. Thanks for watching KTXS News at 10. See you back here tomorrow. Jimmy Kimmel's next.